Wow. My goodness, it's a beautiful day out there. Yesterday, in yesterday's video, you see that little splatter on the lens right there? That's a splatter of a welder. Welding splatter. Look, when I look on the screen, it looks phenomenally clear, but... Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. And what I'd like to do is show you a little modification that I made to one of the vices on my milling machine. But more than that, maybe just to kind of get you thinking about some of the little tiny tweaks and modifications that you could do to existing tools that you have or tools you buy in the future that can really make your life easier. Now, I love tools just as much as the next guy. I mean, obviously, the tools are what allow us to do what we want to do, to make what we want to make but not all tools are ideally suited for our specific tasks. Lately, I've been really trying to focus on looking at the tools that I use and asking myself, is there a way that I can make a modification to make this better for exactly what I want? And they don't have to be big. The one that I'm gonna show in particular here with my vise on my milling machine, it was a tiny, tiny thing, but it has saved me hours and hours of work. Now, if you hang out in the blacksmith community or the knife making community, you know everybody talks about the fact that we have to make a lot of our own tools. Tools. One example of that is this plate quench vise. Now this is just a woodworking vise. I took some aluminum plate, drilled and tapped it, and now I've got a custom vise that's excellent for heat treating stainless steel blades, for plate quenching blades. And it's just so much more convenient and efficient than trying to deal with the plates and clamp them down. I've seen people stand on the plates. A little modification of a tool that was not designed to do that, and you got a winner. Another great example, and I believe Jimmy DeRista was like the, the one who championed this. Something as simple as using a portable bandsaw in a fixed position. You know, this is a brilliant idea. This tool was not designed to be used this way, but how many people do you see doing this? And it is such a great way to get into a metal cutting bandsaw, but this wasn't designed like this. This was somebody looking at a tool and being like, hey, how could I adapt this for my own purposes? Now I made a little mount on this one, so basically just gravity holds it in place. Right now it's a bone stock Milwaukee portable bandsaw put it in there take a little metal plate with a quick release clamp on it just like that I've got a nice work rest on there it's removable and this little piece here this little modification makes using this tool just such a dream for what I need to do. The thing I'm really noticing lately is that these little modifications, these little tweaks, these hacks that we do to our tools, they don't have to be a big deal, right? They don't have to be like a complete change up or in the example of my plate quench vise, you know, using it for a completely different purpose. Sometimes just the slightest little change can have a huge effect. Now the example I'd like to draw your attention to is this little piece of 01 tool steel and this bolt right here. Nothing crazy, I mean, this vise looks pretty much like any other vice you know it looks very similar to before I made my modification but this one little modification has saved me hours in setup how so well I use this vice for making my sanding blocks the knife maker sanding blocks and for me having a stop at the end of it right there it gives me instant indexing of every piece so I just clamp it down like that and boom I've got it referenced for when I'm milling in these grooves you know I go one side I can flip it to the other side Boom, works great for drilling. Sometimes when I'm doing little weird machining features on, on different knife handles and stuff, I've got templates, I've got jigs and fixtures that I use in here. And again, it's so nice to be able to reference this in here. I can bolt my scales onto this, slide it to my stop, and, and know exactly where I'm at every single time. And when we think about these things, a lot of the times we can design them in such a way that they're multifunctional, right? You know, if I had maybe welded something or, or put something bigger on here, this vise might have to stay like this. But, you know, I've got this little screw here. I just tap this jaw. I can loosen this off. And by rounding the corner of it, like that, when I tighten it up in the bottom, it's totally out of the way. So there's no interference. Now, basically, this vise is gonna do the exact same thing it's done before my modification, but with one quick adjustment, boom, I've got a nice custom setup that works great for what I need to do. Also, I made this one so that I can kick it out this way so that when things have to be clamped like this, it works in that configuration too. One little tiny piece of 01 tool steel, a screw and a tapped hole, and this is like, I would never work without this little setup here. Another modification I did to this vise was I took out the little bar that goes in here. You know, that's kind of how they design you to tighten it up. You can get a lot more leverage on it. But for the things that I use this vise for, for these light machining applications that I have, 
Just cranking it by hand gets it tight enough and it's so much faster, that bar's not in the way, it's not cumbersome, and just boom, loosen it up, tighten it down. Little modification, huge difference to my operation. And those are just a couple of examples of little tiny tweaks, little modifications that can have a huge impact in the way that you work, in your efficiency, just your ability to get stuff done. And it's, it's a great way to think about things. You know, I never used to think like that. I used to look at a tool and I'd use it exactly the way that I saw it. But sometimes when you just think outside of the box and look at something and say, hmm, or look at a process that you do and be like, you know what, what, what would this be like? What would Utopia be as far as tooling to do this? And maybe you can just adapt some existing tools, even in the areas of leather work. I mean, I'm not overly experienced with leather work, but one thing I've done recently is I've taken these really cheap little hardware clamps and I've just glued little leather pads on them so that I can use them to clamp down my seam when the glue's drying and it holds it up and the little bit of leather on there prevents it from marring the, the leather of the sheath. And just little tiny things like that are so exciting to find and they're out there. You just gotta, you just gotta think differently about stuff and I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot of great little tweaks, little hacks that you can do to your own tools to make your work more efficient. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers.